UPS students and families. We hope each of you is healthy and enjoying this beautiful spring. Welcome to another Read Aloud. This week, we are reading the story, The Tiny Seed, written and illustrated by Eric Carl. Eric Carl wrote all the words and drew all the illustrations. So he is the author and illustrator of this story. The tiny seed is about the life cycle of a flower. The story begins when a flower pod bursts and sends out its seeds in the wind. Not all of the seeds survive the journey, but the tiny seed lands in good soil and begins to grow. Listen as we ask and answer questions during this read aloud. We will even focus some of our questions on the major events in the story. After you listen to the story, we will ask you a few more questions for you to think about and talk about with someone at home. Then you will see two different writing prompts. You may choose one or both prompts to write about. You can even share your writing with your teacher. Finally, we will give you a few ideas for how to extend and enrich your learning and have some fun. We hope you enjoy The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. Today's read aloud is The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle, one of my favorite stories. A special thank you to Scholastic for allowing us to read this story together today. This story tells about the long journey and life of a tiny seed alongside many other seeds. As we read together, I want you to be thinking about the different things that happen to the seeds along the way. It is autumn. A strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them across the land. One of the seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? Sometimes authors will give us questions to think about while we are reading, like this one did. Will the tiny seed be able to keep up with the others? Where are all the seeds going? What do you think? Whisper your idea to someone sitting next to you at home. One of the seeds flies higher than the others. Up, up it goes. It flies too high and the sun's hot rays burn it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. What happened to some of the seeds on this page? Can you find the tiny seed? Point to it. Another seed lands on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Why can't the seed grow on an icy mountain? Do you see the tiny seed? He's having a hard time keeping up. Now they fly over the ocean. One seed falls into the water and drowns. The others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. Can you find the tiny seed? Why might the tiny seed be in danger if it doesn't fly as high as the other seeds? Whisper your idea to someone at home.
One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Can you see the tiny seed on this page? Point to it. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It is so small that the bird does not see it. Do you see it? Now it is winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch. But the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. What are some things the tiny seed was able to avoid on the last few pages? Well, the tiny seed didn't get eaten by a bird or by this mouse. Why not? Whisper your idea to someone close by. If you said it's because he is so tiny that he wasn't seen, you are right. Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, rain falls, the seeds grow so round and full they start to burst open a little. Now they are not seeds anymore. They are plants. First, they send roots down into the earth. Then, their little stems and leaves begin to grow up toward the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big fat weed, and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants. And that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It will be too late. Hurry! But finally, it starts to grow into a plant. Which plant is the tiny seed? Remember, the author told us it is the plant that started growing the latest. Does that mean the tiny seed is a big or small plant right now? Small. Point to the tiny seed and its plant. There it is, in between those two plants on the right side of the screen. The warm weather also brings the children out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun and springtime. One child does not see the plants as he runs along and oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what is happening? First, there are footsteps. Then, a shadow looms over them. Then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. Some things have happened to the plants because of people on the last few pages. Can you name them? That's right, someone stepped on a flower and someone else picked a flower for his friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. 
The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It is taller than the people. It is taller than the trees. It is taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near to look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. What happened to the tiny seed? Whisper to someone nearby. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights grow cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop from the giant flower, and they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. This story has taken us through all of the four seasons. Can you name the four seasons? Autumn, winter, spring, and summer. Autumn is another word for the fall. The wind blows harder. The flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower, and this time the flower's seed pod opens. Out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away in the wind. The end. Now that you've listened to the story, let's talk about it. In the beginning of the story, Eric Carl the author, asked you to think about if the seed will keep moving. Did the seed keep moving? Where did it go? The seed turns into a real flower during the spring season and continues to grow during the summer. Why do you think the seed grows the biggest during these two seasons? What is special about spring and summer? Can you remember all of the things that happened to the other seeds throughout the story? Did you remember that the sun burned up the first seed? What happened to the rest of the seeds? Now, it's your turn to write about it. You may choose one or both prompts to write about. Draw a flower. Be sure to include all four parts of a flower. The roots, the stem, leaves, and the flower. Label each part of your flower. Then try to write a sentence about it.
This story uses words that have opposite meanings, like tiny and giant. Draw something that you think is tiny. Draw another thing that you think is giant. Write a sentence telling how those two things are different. Now it's time to have some fun. You can choose from any of the following activities. Number one, use construction paper, popsicle sticks, crayons, or some other art supplies you have to create a giant flower. Be sure to include the stem and leaves. Try to even add roots to the bottom of your flower. Give your flower to someone important to you to show them how much you love them. Number two, find some seeds on the ground, such as acorns or helicopter or whirler seeds that come from maple trees, dandelion puff seeds, or any seeds you can find. Ask someone if they can help you plant that seed somewhere safe. Check on that seed for a few weeks to watch what happens. Three, go outside on a day that is windy. See what kind of things are being blown around by the wind. Pick up a leaf blade of grass, or something else lightweight, and let the wind take it from your hand. See where it goes, but don't follow it too far. We hope you've enjoyed today's read aloud of the Tidy Seed. We wish you continued happiness and health, and can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, kindergarten readers and writers. This week, you're going to be working on reading words with the long U sound. And that spelling is going to be U consonant E or U blank E. Is this all starting to sound familiar? You're going to be learning the long U sound using a very similar spelling pattern that we've been working on for the past three weeks. As you know, before we learn this spelling pattern, Let's test our sounds. Sit up nice and tall for me today. We are going to do an activity where I'm going to say the whole word. Then I'm going to ask you to change the first sound of that word. Let's practice. If this word was date, d, eight, I'm going to change the d to a mmm, mmm. Eight. The word is mate. Good. Let's do another one. If the word is mate, I'm going to change this to l, late. The word is late, changing this sound to f, f, eight, fate. Now it's your turn. The word is tote, tote. Change this to n, note. Good. The word is note. Change this to coat. The word is coat. Change this to oat. What's the word? Wrote. The word is wrote. Change this to mm, oat. Moat. The word is moat. Change this sound to g. Goat. Excellent. All right, let's try another one. Ready? You might not even need this. Listening to the sounds. 
The word is night. What's the word? Night. Change this to r -ight. right. The word is right. Change this to k kite. The word is kite. Change this to s-ite. What's the word? Sight. The word is sight. Change this to l-light. The word is light. Change this to m-might. Beautiful job. You listened to those sounds and what you did was you substituted this sound for another one. Excellent job. All right, it's time. Let's learn more about our long U sound. You remember our good old tug card? This is our U, our short U. It said, uh, uh, uh. That boat had a lot to lug and he was tugging on this big old, big old ship. So remember, Use my name, two sounds I use, short U in cub, long U in fuse. One more time. Use my name, two sounds I use, short U in cub, long U in fuse. If you hear this U sound at the beginning of the word, you know what I want you to do. Put your hands on your head. Good job. If you don't hear you at the beginning of the word, then you get to give me your silent X. Good. Before we get started, let me have you say you three times. Ready? You, you, you. That's the sound that we're going to be listening to at the beginning of the word. Use. Use. Equal. Equal. Infant, infant. United, united. Uniform, uniform. Apple, apple. Utensil, utensil. You. Good job. Now let's listen for the you in the middle of the word. So if you need to, that roller coaster always helps me. If I hear in the middle of the word, it's going to be right here at the peak. Okay. So if my sample word was cute, cute, cute. All right. If you hear it in the middle of the word, hands on your hips. The word is mute. Mute. Good job. The word is hurt. Hurt. The word is cube. Cube. You. The word is funny. Funny. The word is huge, 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 good job. Okay, it's time. Now that we have heard the long U sound, let's look at some words with that spelling pattern in it. When we look at the long U spelling pattern, we know that U, consonant E, or U, silent E is what we're looking for. But as this chart goes, our short U sound might be found on this side of the chart, and our long U sound is going to be found on this side of the chart. So knowing that, let's get started. Knowing that this is going to have the uh, uh, uh sound. Then we have our tug card here, sound, sound, uh, sound, b. Blend it together. Cub. What's the word? Cub. Excellent. We're going to now move on to our long U. U. So I see my spelling pattern. It's going to make the U sound. So ready? Sound. K. Sound. U. 
Q sound, B. Blend it, cube. What's the word? Cube. So we had cub, now is cube. Changing the uh to you. Let's go on to the next one. Thinking of our short U tug card. Sound, t, sound, uh. Blend those two sounds. T, sound, b. Blend it all together. Tub. What's the word? Tub. Good job. Now I see my long U spelling pattern. When you are working in your small readers this week and you're working on your papers, make sure that you see that spelling pattern. All right, ready? Sound, t. Sound, U. Blend that together. Two. Sound, b. Blend it. Tube. Tube. Noticing that E is silent. So we could even do t oob and put our silent bubble in because we know that's not going to make a sound. Let's do two more. We have our short U sound and our long U sound. Short U, uh, ready, sound, k, sound, uh, blend those two, k, sound, t, blend it all together, cut, what's the word? Cut. I see my long U spelling pattern. Do you see it? Good. Ready? Sound. K. Sound. U. Put, put that together. Q. T sound. T. All together. Cute. What's the word? Cute. The last thing that we're going to do together is we're going to use sound by sound blending to blend words with the long U sound. Ready? Sound. Mm. Sound. You. Let's blend those together. You. Good. Sound. T. Put it all together. Mute. What's the word? Mute. Good. Next word. Sound, sound, you, blend those two together, you, sound, mm, all together, you, what's the word? Fume, really good reading this week. Have a wonderful time reading and working on long you this week. Happy reading.